Hello gamers, Yoshi here, and in today's video, I will be updating my PvE tier list to reflect patch 3.4.0.1. So if you're reviewing this in a future season that is not in Season of the Lost, just note that many changes have been made to the game since the release of this video, and that any of these tiers probably don't reflect the current uh, in-game meta. So a lot of the tiers I will sign now probably won't hold up in the future. Before I get into it, there are three areas I will be looking at to assess how these exotics are going to be tiered. The first area is how the exotic performs in endgame content like raids, nightfalls, and hard mode activities. This includes usage while being at level and under level, so while at contest mode or over the required level, so in things like Master Vog. How the exotic performs in its slot, so how it performs versus other legendaries and other exotics as well as how the exotic performs against other of its kind, so other um, exotics and legendaries in the kinetic slot, in the energy slot, in the power slot. And lastly, I will be looking at how artifact mods impact these weapons. So yes, you heard it right. This time around, I will be assessing the impact of artifact mods on the weapons, mostly because Bungie has established that they are controlling metas from season to season through the usage of these artifact mods. Before, I was kind of a little iffy about it if I really wanted to assess how certain exotics worked in combination with the uh, artifact mods, just because I wasn't sure like that gives a good representation of the weapon's power, but since Bungie is really leaning into the artifact mods and like the debuff, uh, the weapon debuffs from the artifact mods, and just how easy it's uh, it is to obtain these artifact mods, I will be assessing how the artifact mods impact the tiers and the ratings of these weapons. However, I will not be assessing how weapons perform when using certain builds or mods. This reason is mostly because unlike the artifact mods, most combat mods are extremely hard to obtain. Uh, you have to go to Ada and Banshee every single day, and you just have to get lucky to get the right mods. And if I were to base an exotic uh, based off of certain mods you need to make the exotic good in the first place, well, that's not really fair to a lot of the people who are going to be uh, viewing this video. Uh, just because of how hard it is to get these certain combat mods. And of course, again, I will be looking at performance in patrol and in strikes. However, this uh, this performance will be less, uh, uh, less weighted towards the overall score, mostly because if you've ever played in patrol and in strikes, anything nukes anything, and bosses and strikes just get nuked by pretty much anything. You don't even need debuffs or buffs in these uh, strike content uh, strike content excuse me to make these weapons good so i won't be really looking at that too much this guide is kind of more focused towards higher end more difficult content because that's what i assume most people are playing uh, nowadays and then of course this tier list is pc focused and i have personally used many of these exotics in the past season and many of the aforementioned pieces of content to see how well they stand please remember this tier list is based off of my own personal experience and use and just because i'd say something is f tier doesn't mean it isn't s tier for you or for someone else this is just based off of my personal experience and please note that i grade these exotics based off of their usefulness factor not their fun factor and just because I assign something a C tier doesn't mean that it's useless. It just means it's average. A lot of people think, oh, you have so many guns in C tier. That means they're useless. No, it just means they're average performing. They're not extremely great, but they're not awful either. They do the job that needs to be done. S tier means that it can perform all the jobs and just destroys everything. And it's just so easy to use like, you know, you know a toddler could use it. F tier means like it doesn't even fulfill the roles that an exotic needs to fulfill. Like there's a legendary that can pretty much outperform, you know, things found in F tier. Or F tier just means like its general usefulness is not, you know, useful enough. It's way too niche and out of the way that for me, it's just, you know, F tier. I would never use it. So starting off let's get right into it and get into the fusion rifles which are dominating the dominating this season's meta started off we have mythoclast 
Mythoclast, if you don't know, is a raid exotic. It comes from the Vault of Glass raid. It is a very sought after weapon, especially for PvP, because it currently dominates in PvP, even with the nerf it received in the December 7th patch. Um, its aim assistance was nerfed, and like the overload stacks it got were nerfed, but honestly, that really didn't impact how the weapon was performing in PvP. Sure, it maybe toned down the aim assistance for you know killing people in PvP, but that's not what we're talking about here. What we're more interested in is PvE here. And aim assistance and PvE, who cares? Uh, the overload stacks and PvE really doesn't matter. Like, you're killing red bars with this thing anyways. You're going to get your overload stacks um, or your overcharge stacks or whatever uh, fast anyways. So, honestly, nerf really didn't impact this weapon. However, particle destruction with this weapon makes it an absolute beast especially when you switch to that linear fusion fire uh, fire mode and you start firing off on um, mini bosses or champions really helps it's a really good weapon for stunning champions for free because unlike other fusion uh, weapons and the linear fusions you know there isn't a charge time it just shoots it just goes it is so good uh, for stunning for general ag clear for dealing with overpowered um overpowered enemies only if you have the particle destruction mod that is it pairs well you can have a special in your kinetic slot you can have another linear fusion in your heavy slot or any other thing in your heavy slot of course that is an exotic in terms of performance and raids i'd say it's a solid pick I don't know if I would run with it in Master Vogue. I think there are definitely better picks to be taking into Master Vogue. As for GMs, it's definitely a very good pick for GMs. I wouldn't take it into every single GM, especially the ones that don't have uh, unstoppable champions. It's not as good there. But in the GMs where unstoppable champions exist, Mythic Class does pretty damn well. Uh, obviously you can kind of tell where this is going so I'm going to be placing it in S tier. The next fusion rifle we have is a kinetic fusion rifle. It is Bastion. Bastion fires slugs off. Uh, it did receive the unstoppable. I think intrinsically uh, you can stun unstoppable champions with it so you don't need that uh, unstoppable mod. It's it's okay. Its range kind of got nerfed, I think, in, um, in PvP. Doesn't really matter that much in PvE, but it it just, it's okay. It still excels in some niche circumstances, especially for certain raid encounters. Like, I think in Deepstone Crypt, it's still pretty good for taking out the uh, security fuses. Uh, but other than that, I wouldn't say it's that great because I used this recently in the Grasp, uh, sorry, the Grasp, the G O A dungeon, the new 30th anniversary dungeon. I, I, I can't say it. Grasp of Avaris, I, I believe that's how you say it. I, I used it in there against the boss, and like, you're just better off using a legendary fusion, honestly. Like, it does do a ton of damage because it is slug based, but. Its range is kind of poo-poo, and like, you know, it doesn't have the range of other fusion rifles. It just kind of like, it kind of exists. Like, I wouldn't even say it's like average here. I would say it's like slightly below average, um, even with the particle destruction mod. And like, if you take particle destruction away from this weapon, like, there's not a lot it has going for it. I feel like it's still more of a PvP oriented weapon, but even for PvP, it's just like it's kind of fallen off a cliff after those uh, Guardian damage nerfs. So I'm going to have to stick Bastion in D tier. Next up, we have oh, all the fusions here. So not a fusion, not a fusion. We have Jotun. Jotun still a beast super easy to use uh it's got the tracking built into it it can leave the um the so-called sunspots behind they're not actually sunspots it's the burn i think you can get it to pair with bottom tree dawn blade but i don't think 
sometimes it doesn't proc the explosions for bottom tree dawn blade and of course you would have to be using bottom tree dawn blade to get the most out of Jotun. i still think it's very good for taking out majors so like your orange bars your lemon bars whatever your colorblind setting is set to for me they're the pink bars um it definitely takes takes them out uh pretty well but other than that um because of its like single fire usage it kind of it's not that great for taking out ads for clearing lots of ads it's better you know as a special um taking out majors in raids i i can't really like unless you're just playing normal raids and you're just memeing around it you know that's where it would come in um i wouldn't take i probably wouldn't take this into gms and i probably won't be taking this into master vog uh it just it's a high, i think it has better purpose than bastion because it has that range and has you know like ease of use but i wouldn't say it's like anything better than just average tier so uh jotun for me for pve that's a c tier next fusion rifle in this list we have 1000 voices 1000 voices i think still s tier not as good as sleeper but sleeper is in a different category um sleepers in the linear fusion rifles 1k is a fusion rifle 1k so easy to use any content it just nukes it nukes champions it nukes uh hard mode champions it's still good in master vog i wouldn't say you're going to be using this against bosses though in master vog um but it you know it has that purpose it just you point and click you you play ms paint it destroys and things like gambit it still destroys adds um, it destroys people in Gambit when you invade with this thing. You just point and click. Um, of course, with the mods, uh, particle deconstruction, it performs even better. 1K always just kind of floated between A and S tier for me. Uh, in terms of its slot, let's see. I think it beats out most of the things in its slot. And as a um, heavy exotic, it, it's beating a lot of the heavy exotics in its slot. So I'm going to keep it at S tier. Next fusion rifle we have is, let's see, sleepers, not technically. Uh, we have Telesto, everyone's favorite, always breaking the game. Telesto is besto. Telesto pretty pretty solid still um of course its perks are a little outdated just because um it used to be a heavy weapon technically now it's a spe in the special slot um it's a little the perk is kind of nice because it auto reloads it after you get multi kills so i guess it is nice in that regard and then if you have the catalyst you have deeper pockets so you can have more um Mag your magazine size has increased to seven from four the bolts are nice because enemies just run into them it does you know it does beefy damage i wouldn't say it does insane damage uh especially even with particle deconstruction on it you know it definitely busts the damage but i wouldn't say telesto is like killing it out there i wouldn't say it's like s tier right now I haven't really used it that much and I haven't seen a lot of people using it that much. It's still kind of like, you know, it has, it, it can have better roles when using certain combat mods, but again, I'm not rating this gun off of combat mods. I would say it's slightly better than Jotun just because you can spray the bolts so you can hit more targets instead of doing single target damage like how Jotun is better for. But I wouldn't say it's like A tier or you know s tier is really pushing it and a tier i don't know if it can sit at a tier right now i think it's just a b tier for me next fusion we got here is let's see going down the list i think oh, i missed one it, it was merciless so merciless merciless is good you got that you know the quasi kill clip on it when you reload after a kill you got the ramping up of the uh, charge time until you finally get the kill. However, I I don't know. It, it's it's like on par with Telesto. I would say it's slightly worse than Telesto. 
um, just because of its charge time, because it's a thousand uh, milliseconds or whatever right now, because it's an aggressive frame technically. Um, it's just the the charge time feels bad. Like, of course, it ramps up over time, but like, you know, if you're shooting red bar ads, you're just gonna kill them right away. And if you're shooting majors, you get one more burst off. When you're using it against bosses, you're really feeling the effects of Merciless a lot more. However, I can't say I've used this a lot in raids, in Nightfalls, uh, in hard mode content. I wouldn't say it's there for me. Um, I would just say it's it's kind of become a re relic of the past. Um, so it's on par with Bastion. I would say Particle, Particle Deconstruction here is definitely gatekeeping this from being F tier. Uh, these weapons still have purpose, but I wouldn't say their purpose is that great with the current weapons available. Next up we have... Let's see, I think that's it for the fusions. Let me just double check here. This is not, not a fusion. We have... Not a fusion, of course. Not a fusion. Trace Rifle. And we have another trace rifle here, linear fusion. Linear fusion again. What else we got here? Linear fusion again. Linear fusion, or sorry, trace rifle, trace rifle. Uh, linear fusion and trace rifle. So that does it for the fusion rifles. Next up, let's uh, move on to the Trace rifles will save the linear fusions for last. So for trace rifles, the first off we we have here is Cold Heart. Cold Heart still like it's good, but it's not like great, uh, and it's not benefiting from particle deconstruction. Unfortunately, being a trace rifle, um, I it just still kind of exists. I. Again, I wouldn't say it's as good as Prometheus because Prometheus, you got that auto loading factor. Yes, with Cold Heart, you're beaming targets if they're not dying. Cold Heart does more damage over time. But, you know, it's like, why use Cold Heart when you could just use 1K or you could just use, you know, Mythoclast uh, in that slot? Um, Mythoclast is just so much easier to use, does so much more damage than Cold Heart. Even in this slot now that we have the legendary um retrace path or whatever it's called from the 30th anniversary i feel like with certain perks you can make that weapon better than cold heart um and cold heart kind of you know losing losing places still i wouldn't say it's downright useless just because you can do more damage over time if your target hasn't died but i wouldn't say it's like an average weapon you know cold heart for me is a d tier weapon right now um even with like the the trace rifle mods and everything that was introduced it's just you know it's like merciless it's just you know becoming a relic of, of the past you know it, it can't really compete with the times uh the next trace rifle we have is divinity divinity i still think is a very good utility weapon even though the divinity player themselves isn't really doing the damage the utility they provide to their teammates, to their raid teammates, um, whatnot, it's just, it's free damage, it's just free, and the and it's so nice that this thing also stuns Overload Champions, it's a really nice combo on the Overload Champions, people still do the Divinity to Izanagi's for the GM Nightfalls for hard mode activities as well, it just absolutely nukes them. Uh, as for its slot, I don't think uh, Retrace Path is beating Divinity here. It's obviously beating Cold Heart and Prometheus and all that. I wouldn't say it's S tier just because of like, as a weapon on its own, it's not that great, but as a weapon combined with others, it's a lot better. So that's why it's, for me, it's just sitting at A tier, not into S tier. because. For it to be into S tier by itself as a solo weapon, like it's got to be putting out that damage numbers. You got like you got to seriously justify to me that you're bringing divinity into solo uh, content. 
And to me, Divinity is not a solo weapon. It's a team play weapon. And if you don't have your teammates there with you, it's not that great, honestly. Uh, so for me, Divinity, A tier. Next trace rifle we have is... I believe it's Prometheus Lens. Prometheus, for me, will always just be one step ahead of Cold Heart. The reason being is, as I've mentioned with the Cold Heart part, is that with Prometheus, it can auto-reload. And just auto reloading for ag clearing, it's just, it's so much nicer than cold heart. It just, it's a little easier to use. Uh, of course, if you keep shooting, the Prometheus little bubble keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can hit more targets with it. I wouldn't say, you know, it's insane. It's taken out majors like super well, um, like kind of like how cold art can. It's not, you know, it's, it's kind of on par with retrace path, you know, um, the legendary it's just like it's good but it's not bad uh, for me prometheus is c tier next uh trace rifle we have let's see wave splitter wave splitter i'm sorry f tier it's just if this thing had a catalyst i think wave splitter would be way better but the fact again the fact of the matter with wave splitter is you have to use another weapon to create orbs to then benefit from wave splitter and it's like you have to use other weapons to make this weapon good and i understand there's perk sound that exists like harmony and whatnot but the fact that wave splitter on its own like it's just not that great it's just like you know it's a legendary trace rifle without the you know random good perks that you could get on it to, to me, Waste Splitter is just F tier. And who's bringing this into raids? Who's bringing this into nightfalls or hard mode activities? You know, I feel like just a sniper rifle, you know, you would have better a better time using a sniper rifle than you would uh, using Wave Splitter for any form of content. So Wave Splitter for me, F tier. Sorry. Next up, we have Ruinous Effigy. Ruinous Effigy. Uh... It's still okay. It's definitely not useless. But the orbs themselves... Like, Bungie's definitely... With that nerf of Ruinous Effigy received a long time ago, they definitely wanted to lean in towards people using it, you know, as for the heavy attacks than for, the, like, the block. The block, I know a lot of people will say, oh, the block, you know, wasn't that good. No, the block was pretty good. Uh, the fact that it will debuff enemies pretty much for free um was kind of stupid in my opinion you could just kill like a red bar and then just get like this free really good debuff capability um i don't i think people kind of it's a little controversial that nerf i'd say like it really didn't warrant it um that much to nerf it that much into the ground but i don't think people really saw you know that how good ruinous was actually uh, and the fact that it could provide a free debuff um and blinding or whatnot with the block so ruinous now i i want to say it's kind of like a meme weapon like you're not seeing a lot of people bring it into uh, any content it just kind of exists and i wouldn't say it exists more like you know that of a c tier it just like i don't know like putting in c tier i feel like maybe i think yeah ruinous just it, it exists it's a c tier like it's not woefully bad because the orbs are pretty nice to use uh you can definitely deal a lot of damage with the orbs but it's not doing you know as, uh, beyond the orbs it's not got a lot going for it so ruinous for me is c tier and I believe the last trace rifle, the one that was added this season, is Aegir's Scepter. And with the catalyst, this thing is a beast. The uh, charged laser beam you get, uh, consuming your super, does a ton of damage. Aegir's, especially combined with stasis builds. I know I'm not really talking about builds that much, but stasis is just like a, you know... You just play the game. It's not like you have to hunt for the mods 
from Ada or Banshee. So you just use the Stasis subclass, and especially for Warlocks, Ice Flare blo uh, sorry, excuse me, Ice Flare Bolts make Aegirs extremely good. Uh, just on its own, it has a pretty pretty good uh, TTK, I'd say, against uh, most adds, especially when you got the um, when you consume your super with this thing. It's just ass blasting everything from existence. Um, I wouldn't say it's you know s tier but i would say it's definitely uh a tier for me uh Aegers is definitely a very good build especially if you combo it with uh, certain exotics in the warlock department it can be a very strong weapon especially for slowing targets and freezing them i believe that's it for the trace rifles let's just double check this list just want to make sure i don't miss anything and have to come back to it later All right, I believe that's it for the trace rifles. So up next, we'll be looking at the linear fusion rifles. And of course, we got Arbalest here first. Instant S tier, especially with the buffs that Arbalest received. The fact that it can one-shot the barriers off of barrier champions just makes it so much better than Ariana's. The fact that it can shoot through any shield at all um, is great. Uh, it can nuke any shield, pop any shield, doesn't need to, you know, it doesn't need to be void, doesn't need to be arc or solar, you know, it just, it does its job, and it does it really well, especially with Genesis reloading it from reserves, it is a very nice weapon to use, especially comboed now with part um, particle destruction, it just, it nukes, nukes adds, it nukes champions, it can nuke bosses, Potentially, since it is a linear fusion rifle, since they are doing more damage with the particle destruction mod, it's just, it's it's hot right now. It's hot. There's no way, um, no other way to describe it, really. It's just a hot weapon right now. It's S tier. Next, we have in the linear fusion rifle department, I believe is Sleeper. Let's see. Let me just believe it's sleeper so yes yeah, sleepers next instant s tier if anything sleeper is like at the top the very top like triple s tier right now this thing just nukes bosses especially with the particle deconstruction mod it just absolutely nukes bosses it makes one phasing bosses so freaking easy especially if you have a good team with you it can make soloing dungeons incredibly easy because it just provides free damage I will say you need to have the catalyst though to make this weapon good. However, I am judging all these weapons based off of their full capabilities. So if you have the catalyst with sleeper, which is pretty easy to get, I think you could you just get it from drops from uh, completing nightfalls. This thing just destroys. It is so good. I can't even compare it to other legendary weapons or other ex uh, exotic weapons in this slot or of its type. It is just that good right now. Uh, if you can get sleeper definitely get sleeper before the end of this season and try it out You will see how great it is I think even after this season is over it will retain some of that power especially with all the buffs it received to it uh, Especially with all how all the linear fusion rifles got that buff I think it will still be somewhat on top after this season even if it isn't getting the insane damage buffs from particle deconstruction so sleeper instant s tier next up we have in the linear fusion rifle department i believe is queensbreaker which is if you've ever used it very disappointing um i don't think it even honestly i think queensbreaker is f tier like i don't think it even out damages certain uh legendary fu uh, linear fusion rifles it just it doesn't even do its job anymore it just I wouldn't even say it just exists. It just exists to be, you know, thrown away to get deleted. Like if you if you've gotten this thing and you've used it, you know how absolutely worthless it is. Even with the artifact mods, it just sucks. It is so bad. I don't know how they're gonna make Queensbreaker good. Maybe they'll turn it into more of a PvP centric weapon, but as a PVE centric weapon. It just sucks. Don't don't pick it up. Don't get it. Don't waste your time. Um, you know, get sleeper. Get arbalist. 
Those are way better options. Let's see. Next up in the linear fusion department, we have, I believe, Lorentz driver. Lorentz added this season. Lorentz, pretty good. I wouldn't say, you know, it seems like it was more focused towards PvP. I don't know if it was really designed that much for PvE. I think it still can potentially help you out in certain content like raids and GM Nightfalls, maybe in Master Nightfalls. Of course, anything below Master, it will just do its job um, as a linear fusion. I think in its slot, it what is it competing against? I don't think it's competing against any other exotic linear fusions in its slot. Um, as its type, I don't think it's beating Arbalest. I don't think it's beating Sleeper. Um, and it's lot is it beating any of these i think it's beating cold heart for sure you know merciless bastion i think it's beating that jotun prometheus ruinous i'd say it's you know it's sitting in c tier i can't really see this weapon you know beating telesto um you know in terms of usefulness and like damage and whatnot i think it's just kind of c tier right now i i definitely think this is more of a pvp weapon though than a pve weapon even with like the the tag pickups you get to boost its damage i i really think lawrence is more pvp uh, than pve even with the damage uh, buffs of its um weapon perks so i believe that's it for the linear fusions let me just double check here linear fusions All right, looks like that's it. So next up, let's move on to, I guess, bows. So bows this season, we got overload bow back. So that's nice. I know some people don't like overload bow for some reason, but overload bow just, it's easy, it's free. You pull back the, the arrow and you release and it instantly stuns the champion. There's no like continuously, continuously firing at the champion waiting for the proc to happen. Tiku's, especially with the Catalyst, with the uh, Sacred Flame stacks, does hella damage against champions, uh, against certain major adds, if you know how to use it. Um, if you actually read how the perk works, and you follow through with how the you know perk activates, especially with the Catalyst, Tiku's is a very good weapon still, especially with the Overload Bow. Uh, for its slot, though... I'd say it's slightly beating Divinity just because, you know, it has more use as a solo weapon. I don't know if it's really beating Mythoclast right now. Um, it might be, you know, it's, it might be on par with Mythoclast or maybe just below it. I, I honestly say Tiku's is sitting at A tier right now. I wouldn't say it's S tier right now just with how powerful fusions are in this current meta, but... It is one of the most powerful bows that you can get uh, in this game. That is an exotic bow, at least. And the perks that it has, you know, it just makes it really easy to use. It's free damage. Why not use it? Um, it's an A tier for me, for sure. Next bow we have is the Monarch. The Monarch. Lemonarch. The Lemon Boy. Uh, recently got an ornament a lot of people were disappointed at because it just turned the weapon purple but at least it got an ornament really needs a catalyst still the only uh, exotic bow I believe that doesn't have a catalyst aside from wish ender but we'll get into wish ender in a little bit um, it is the trifecta though it is the void bow as Tiku's is the solar bow and eventually we'll get to trinity as the arc bow the Monarch, pretty good, I'd say. I think more people like Le Monarch over Tiku's just because it's a little easier to use. It requires less thought. You just, at the um, apex of the pullback, if you fire it, it does the bonus poison damage. Um, it's a little bit easier to use because when that poison is hitting, you know, it can reach some champions. It's not as good, though, 
in my opinion, than Tiku's because Tiku's gets that little explosion effect, which can kind of help with clearing a lot of ads. Le Monarch excels a little better in lower tier content where you can kind of one shot the ads, but you know, in its slot, I I don't think Le Monarch is beating Tiku's. I think it's just slightly below Tiku's. When Le Monarch though gets a catalyst, maybe it will be doing better than Tiku's. But for me right now, Le Monarch is just B tier. Uh, next build we have Leviathan's Breath. I'm sorry, F tier. <sighs> the fact that the first shot doesn't even do damage to the champion, it just stuns it, just makes it so useless. Having Archer's Tempo on it, just like, why? That just seems like, you know, Bungie's like, haha, it would be, you know what would be funny? If we put Archer's Tempo on Leviathan's Breath. Like, that's what that change seems like to me. Uh, it doesn't do enough damage. It I think just like a, a heavy GL in this slot would beat out Leviathan's Breath in terms of damage. There are way better weapons you can be using to stun unstoppable champions, especially in this current meta. Why are you using Leviathan's Breath to do it? Sure, it can knock back enemies, but like, who cares? Like, that's it. You could just throw a grenade that could do that for you or something like that. Or, you know, use a legendary weapon. You know, use blinding grenades. It's like you don't need Leviathan's Breath to do that. It just it doesn't need it's not even good for what it was created to be. Next bow we have Trinity, Trinity, instant S tier. I don't even care if this season is geared towards the fusion rifles. Trinity is just so damn good. It is so free to use. It just it's so easy to use. It's fun to use. Sure, it's not excelling that well against bosses, against um, majors as much, but for just clearing trash mobs and just helping you stay alive, it just, it's it's too good. It's too good. Trinity is just too good with its catalyst. It just, I don't know how to put it. It just, it outperform. it definitely is outperforming TQs. It's definitely outperforming Divinity um, as an ad clear weapon. Uh, definitely outperforming uh, Telesto, you know, now that primaries are infinite ammo, you know, you have pretty much infinite lightning rod as long as you can proc the perk by getting a kill, and it's pretty easy to get a kill with lightning rod. Sure, you know, it's harder to pair up against majors and against bosses, but in this season you can just run a heavy linear fusion uh, rifle in your, um, uh, you know, in your heavy slot. You could just run threaded needle, tarantula, uh, whatnot. Um, you know, just because Trinity is taking away from that heavy exotic potential doesn't mean, you know, it's killing your entire, your entire flow, your entire like remedy that's going on here. So, so yeah, Trinity for me, still S tier, uh, still such a great, uh, bow to be having to, uh, to use, to get. Next up, we have Wish Ender. Wish Ender comes from Shattered Throne. Um... Wish Ender, I know it does the penetration damage, and I know you get the wall hacks, but what good is wall hacks in PvE? Um, you already know where the enemy is coming from you. If it's shooting you, you know, that's where the enemy's at. You don't need wall hacks to tell you that. Uh, the penetration, uh, extra bonus damage, I don't know if that if it's that great, honestly. Um, it was better when it was bugged, if anyone remembers that. You could do like four times extra damage, but then that got nerfed. Um, or it got fixed. It didn't get nerfed. It got fixed. Um, Wish Ender, I wouldn't even say it's like C tier. I would say it's slightly below average. Like it's not even doing that much damage in the first place. Um, I think just using a, a regular kinetic bow, you could just, you know, have a better time using a regular kinetic bow, free up your exotic slot. Wish Ender for me. I'm sorry, it's D tier. It's not a very good bow. I believe that wraps it up for the bows. It's pretty easy to tell what is a bow here and what is not. So next up, we'll move into scout rifles. Scout rifles, the first off, we have DMT, the uh, Dead Man's Tail, the bane of the PvP um, player base. Uh, a lot of people do not like DMT. It just sucks to play against it in PvP just because it is so damn good. However, for PvE... Uh, we don't have uh, anti-barrier scout rifle mods this season, so that kind of sucks. Yeah, it does have Vorpal on it, and Vorpal did, you know, get a buff to the primary weapons. 
However, it just like yes, you know, you can do bonus damage off of the headshots, but like if it isn't in a strike or a patrol or anything where you're at level, like it's just like just use a legendary scout rifle that has you know better perks or just use a pulse rifle at this point i think when anti-barrier the anti-barrier scout rifle mods come back in the artifact mod i think dmt will definitely move up a lot of places especially if you have a vorpal dmt but right now um like it's just an okay weapon um you know it definitely benefits from the uh, the range you get off of it the fact that it has the uh um Sorry, I can't remember the perk, but the fact that when you're hitting headshots, when you're hitting crits, you're doing more damage over time. Um, the cranial spike, that's what the perk is called. Um, you know, it, it excels from that. But I, I honestly feel like right now, you're probably wasting your exotic slot uh, by taking DMT in this, current, uh, in, in this current season, in this current meta. So for the next scout rifle, we have... I believe it's Mida here. Let's just double check here. I, yeah, Graviton technically a pulse, but you know, kind of a scout rifle. Uh, next we have Mida. Mida, designed for PvP. Why are you using it in PvE? F tier. Um, I really don't feel like I have to elaborate why Mida is F tier. Um, it's It was designed for PvE, or sorry, PvP, I must said PvE. Uh, Mida was designed for PvP, not for PvE. Just don't use it, you're wasting your time. Um, maybe as a fun weapon to use, a meme, meme exotic to take into PvE, but it, it's not a good weapon. It's just, you know, it's for PvP. PvP nerds only. Polaris, Polaris, I think... I think Polaris is, is still like B tier. I wouldn't say Polaris is C tier just because of some of the Warlock interactions you can get with Polaris um, with the perfect fifth. I know infinite ammo is redundant here, but it's technically infinite mag ammo, so you don't have to reload ever, so you can keep shooting forever, um, even though there is infinite ammo now for primaries. Polaris, good scout, however, you know, kind of with the DMT thing here is like you don't have anti-barrier, so it's not really seeing that much action. Bring it into like low level like raids might be fun. I'm not bringing this into Master Vog. Uh, for Nightfalls, not really bringing it into Nightfalls, especially since you know anti barrier scout rifle isn't in this season. Maybe sometimes in hard mode activities, if I need you know like an extra you know you know constant firing weapon if I'm hitting those crits. Uh, in its slot, I'd say it's probably on par with Lorenz. Um, Lorenz is probably beating it because of particle deconstruction, but I don't I don't know if I would take this over Le Monarch or Telesto. I'm probably taking it over Merciless uh, and Cold Art. It's, def it's definitely better than Cold Art and Merciless. So yeah, for me, Polaris is just sitting at C uh, right now for this season. Next up, I think, is Skybirder's Oath. Um... Sorry guys, Skybirder's Oath, just F tier. I think once upon a time it had a purpose, but now it just it just sucks. Like, okay, yeah, you can pierce cabal shields with it. But like we're in a season, you know, of the hive, and like next season is probably gonna be hive and taken. So you're gonna you know you know, we're not fighting the cabal anymore really. Uh, you know, anti-barrier scout rifle's gone. Who cares about, like, oh, it can, you know, loosely track people and it has, like, two firing modes. It's just, you know, it's just, it sucks. I'm sorry. I can't even, like, it's hard to even tell you why I would even, like, use this weapon. It just sucks. I, I don't use this weapon. It's just bad. Even for PvP, it's bad. Next up, we have Jade. Jade, designed for PvP. Uh, you know, body shots make your headshots do, do more damage. But why, you know, why are you doing that in PvE? You want to be hitting crits in PvE. Uh, it's it kind of follows Midas path here. It's more of a PvP weapon, not a PvE weapon. So I'm not really gonna go into depth there. Why uh, Jade Rabbit is a F tier weapon. 
Next up, we have Symmetry. Symmetry, doing a little bit better, I'd say, than um, Jade here. Don't know. It's I wouldn't say it's better than Polaris. I mean, maybe when you have the Symmetry stacks, you know, it's on par with Polaris. Um, but, like, I feel like with Symmetry, it's only thing it has really for it is if you have the symmetry like the revolution stacks if you don't have the stacks like i what's going for it it's a rapid fire a scout rifle just get you know like a rapid fire scout rifle with kill clip or multi kill clip or like four four or anything like you know that's way better than what symmetry's going got going for it i think it definitely was flavor of the month when it came out you know everyone was using it uh in pvp and PvE, uh, I don't even know if people are using it in PvE. I think it's more of a PvP weapon for sure. I, I don't think Symmetry is a very good PvE weapon. <sighs> Maybe you can bring it into low-level raids and low-level nightfalls, but like, I can't even count on my finger how many times I've seen Symmetry used ever in the past like couple of seasons. Like, not even, like, I can't even remember seeing it last season, um, if anything, if at all. Like, no, Symmetry is just not in this meta currently, or in any metas, really, for that matter. Next, for the Scout Rifles, I think that is it. So let's just double check here for the Scouts. Just make sure I covered everything. Yep, it looks like that's it. So let's get on to what we got here, sniper rifles. So next up, sniper rifles. We got Cloud Strike here. Uh, I know this symbol is missing. I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure why it's missing the correct symbol. This came with uh, Beyond Light, so Season of the Hunt. Cloud Strike, well, it doesn't interact that well with Divinity anymore. Uh... I would say, I think last time I, I reviewed this weapon in the tier list, I just said it was pretty much just as good as a, a, you know, a legendary weapon with triple tap. I think it's good at taking out, you know, big, uh, you know, clusters of red bar enemies. But other than that, you know, I don't think Cloud Strike is doing more damage than what you can get out of a triple tap sniper rifle that is legendary. So for me... That kind of puts it at below average, but definitely not, you know, outright useless. So I'd say, you know, Cloud Strike, definitely D tier. Borealis, I'm sorry guys. I know there's a lot of Borealis fanboys out there, but Borealis, especially with the the change that Arbalist got, you know, popping popping those shields uh, in one shot, you know, popping any shields in one shot, Borealis, like, you know, it's got no place now. It's like, what does it do? Oh, it, it can be Arc, Solar, or um, Void. Who cares? Who cares about Ionic Trance either? You know, this weapon, you know, is a relic of the past. It doesn't even do, like, the job it needs to do well. You know, any other weapon can do it better. I think Hardlight can even just do it better, honestly, uh, than Borealis. Instead of wasting your special on uh this uh this slot on your special giving up your special for borealis no it's just not doing it it doesn't even do like good boss damage you know borealis not that great next up sniper rifle department we have darcy darcy did receive a damage buff in the december 7th patch however if you have seen videos of it being used so like damage comparisons if you've looked at i believe there's a good damage comparison spreadsheet out there somewhere darcy's buff didn't even didn't do it uh any justice at all it, if anything it needed like a thousand percent damage buff like this thing is just it's it's not even good like i feel like cloud strikes it's probably beating it um i just and you're wasting your heavy slot on darcy take anything over darcy just even take a heavy linear fusion a legendary heavy linear fusion rifle over Darcy. Like, honestly, 
for any of these weapons. I'd take any of these weapons over Darcy. That's just how bad Darcy's become. Like, I know people want it turned into a special weapon, but if they turn it into a special weapon, then its damage is getting nerfed, and then what, what more is it good at it's just going to become like a pvp weapon it's not going to become like a pve weapon so i really i really don't know how they're going to fix darcy unless they give it like a thousand percent damage buff or something crazy like that moving on we have izanagi's burden izanagi's burden i think is still one of the best weapons in the game i wouldn't say it's you know it's killing it you know, I think it's a little hard to use, uh, especially if you don't, you know, if you don't, you're not used to how the delay is because you can't reload cancel. You can't, anim uh, not reload cancel, you can't animation cancel with Izanagi's. It forces you to wait, you know, the seconds that it makes you to wait to proc uh, Honed Edge. However, it's still, it's still a pretty solid pick to get out of the exotic kiosk, as I've stated in one of my past videos. But, you know, unless you're comboing it with Divinity, it's just, there are just better weapons out there currently, especially in this meta, this current meta. I feel like I take Arbalest over Izanagi's for sure. Like, I can't, I can't justify putting Izanagi's in S tiers, S tier right now, especially when Arbalest is there. Like, I, every day of the week, I'm, I'm going to be taking Arbalest over Izanagi's Burden. Izanagi is still definitely very good. I'm probably I'm probably definitely going to take it over these weapons. Like it does, you know, more burst damage than Lamonic or Telesto can do, even with Telesto's, you know, particle deconstruction. I think Izanagi is still a very good burst weapon um, in this game, even with like you know, it's it's a little tricky to use. But if you know how to use it, you get good at using it. Um, you got those honed edge stacks, especially with the catalyst. You know, it's doing a lot of damage definitely something i'm bringing into raids or nightfalls not sure if i'm gonna bring it into master vog i don't know if that's a very good pick especially when you have to be very picky with your loadout in master vog um performs pretty well in its slots definitely beating other uh beating legendary sniper rifles in its slot uh how the none of the artifact mods are really impacting it but you know it doesn't need the artifact mods to be good so izanagi's burden a tier Next sniper rifle, I think that's it in terms of the sniper rifles. Um, oh no, we got Whisper here. Whisper, I think, still does pretty heavy damage, especially with the buff it received, and now Whisper Breathing takes less time to proc. Um, I'd say, I wouldn't say Whisper is, you know, excelling really hard this season. It's still one of the slower weapons. Yeah, you can generate. We uh, weapon ammo from thin air now it's only one ammo if you're hitting all your crits i don't know am i taking this over telesto i think maybe because like you know if i take it over telesto i free up my um, energy slot i'm probably taking the cartesian uh, and i have the particle deconstruction i guess i know you could use linear fusions over this but you know it creates it's creating free heavy ammo you know it still does a ton of damage um it's not as bursty as izanagi's or some linear fusions and i you know now that i think of it like am i bringing this to do damage to champions it's probably not that great against champions um right now in this current season i but i wouldn't say it's like you know it, it, I have mixed feelings towards Whisper right now. It's probably like a C plus if anything. Um, but Whisper, it's just like, you know, average right now. I think it, it, it fits perfectly at C tier. I think that's it now for the sniper rifles. Let's just double check here again like I do with all the weapons. Looks like we are good to go. So next up, we have hand cannons. We have Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades, get it from the kiosk. Really good PvP weapon. PvE, it's like so-so. Um, it's like good ad clear, I guess. Um, again, more designed for PvP. 
I would say I would probably take this over Jade for sure. I'm probably taking this over Mida uh, in that regard. However, I'm probably not taking Ace over Whisper. Like, I'd probably take Whisper over Ace. Uh, I feel like Polaris does a little bit better uh, of a job than Ace does. I'm probably taking Ace over DMT, but I don't know if Ace sits on the same pedestal as these C tier weapons. Definitely not on B or A or S or anything like that. But I wouldn't say it's downright useless like these weapons here. So for me, Ace, D tier. Am I bringing this into raids? Maybe. Nightfalls? Uh, I don't know. Uh, hard mode activities? Probably not. You know, uh, for me, Ace, just D tier. Uh, it, of course, doesn't interact that well with any of the artifact mods, but, you know, Ace, not completely useless, but I wouldn't even say it's that average. So Ace for me, D tier. Next hand cannon, we got Crimson. Crimson, I'd say... You know, Crimson's probably slightly better than these weapons just because, you know, you can shoot forever. It, it could heal you. The healing potential is really nice still to have out of Crimson. Um, I know we don't have, you know, unstoppable hand cannon again or overload hand cannon, unfortunately. But, you know, Crimson shoots fast, reloads fast. It can heal you. Uh, it can reload itself on its own so you can, you know, have infinite mag time. Am I taking this over Polaris? I don't know. I don't know if I'm taking Crimson over Polaris right now. Probably in the same bar as Polaris. Definitely slightly better than Ace for sure, just because of the healing capability. Um, and just, this is kind of more geared towards PvE than this is. So Crimson, I think, is just average tier right now. C tier, I, I don't know if it's sitting in the same level as Telesto is or the Monarch. Um, definitely not A or S tier. So Crimson, just C tier right now. Next up, we have Ariana's Vow. Yes, it is a hand cannon. Ariana's Vow, I think now, is kind of just uh, B tier. And the real issue with Ariana's Vow is is Arbalest existing. Arbalest just does Ariana's Vow better. Um, they're both specials, so it's not like it's a primary competing with a special or anything like that. Ariana's, yeah, you get that auto reload with the catalyst, and you know, you get that mag increase with the catalyst, but it's just like it takes three shots to pop a barrier shield. Arbalest can do it in one. Uh, it still does high, you know, high damage output, even though, you know, it doesn't benefit from particle deconstruction or anything like that. It's still a solid weapon, and I, I would say it's, I'm definitely going to take Ariana's over Lorentz or Ariana's over, um, Runus Effigy. I don't know if I'm going to take Ariana's over Aegers. I feel like Aegers, you know, is a little bit more helpful in certain activities, uh, just because you can slow things. Ariana's, uh, in raids, maybe... Nightfalls, for sure, it's still still a good pick if you don't have Arbalest. Um, although you probably have Arbalest before you have Ariana's, especially with how Ariana's Catalyst takes, um, what Ariana's Catalyst takes to get. Hard mode activities, maybe bringing Ariana's. Uh, in its slot, yeah, it's definitely performing better than certain legendaries in its slot, for sure, in the uh, damage department. So Ariana's, it's a, it's a solid B tier for me. Next up in the hand cannon department, I believe we have Lumina here. Lumina, it's just, it, it only benefits you when you have teammates, um, you know, to receive that buff. But I feel like Lumina, let's see, Lumina's like F tier for me. Like, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Like, yeah, you get the kill, but, like, if you're solo, you're not really benefiting from Luna because you can't give anyone the buff. So you kind of need teammates to get the buff. However, unlike, you know, Divinity, Divinity can still output damage uh, being Divinity, and it can still ch stun champions on its own. Uh, Luna, what's it got going for it besides, you know, healing other people if you're Middle Tree Warlock, um, Middle Tree Solar Warlock, or, you know, potentially buffing people. Um, other than that, you know... It's just a hand cannon. It's just a hand cannon. So that's what it is. And that's where it's at, F tier. Next up, we have Malfeasance. Malfeasance, even with the buff it received, 
the damage explosion buff um like it's just it's still okay um it's still like c tier i probably i might take malfeasance over crimson just you know for the explosion factor but i don't know if i'm taking malfeasance over whisper i don't know if i'm taking malfeasance over jotun you know over ruinous i feel like ruinous still has some capabilities to fulfill you know with the orb to fulfill over what malfeasance is bringing i'm definitely taking malfeasance over cold heart i'm taking it over wish ender dmt for sure um probably taking it over cloud strike just because of you know remember that cloud strike uh, cloud strike's role can be fulfilled by that of a legendary triple tap sniper rifle so you know pair this with like a legendary uh sniper rifle pretty pretty okay build uh yeah you do more damage against taken but like that damage i feel like is uh negligible especially with all the damage buffs and perks we're getting lately so uh, i think malfeasance right now is just it's an average weapon it's sitting in c tier i think next up in the hang cannon department we, we have sturm sturm f tier designed for pv uh pvp yes you can overcharge with drain but like drain is not that great of a weapon to combo with in pve i think sturm right now is just uh it's a it's a relic of the past it's kind of like um you know it, it it was cool at the time but now i don't think sturm is you know sturm doesn't really have a purpose right now i think other weapons do it better you could just have a legendary uh, hand cannon with anything on it i feel like it would just be better than sturm Next up, we have Sunshot. Sunshot, um, pretty decent, actually. i probably take Sunshot over some of these weapons just because of the explosions from Sunshot. You don't even have to hit the head like you do with Ace. It just creates the explosions. I think Sunshot works with um, some bottom tree builds. It definitely works with, um, you know, the Rasputin, uh, you know... Uh, Warmind cell mods. Of course, we're not talking about Warmind cell mods for this tier list, but you know, I feel like it has you know more oomph, I guess, to it than Ace will ever have, unless Ace gets like a, a buff to it. It's low magazine size, kind of hurts it, and I feel like the sights are a little bit weird. But like you know, that doesn't really affect like its usefulness factor. Is it on par with Ariana's? That I do not know. I think Sunshot is probably C tier when I think about that. I'm probably taking Lamarnock over Sunshot. I'm probably taking Telesto over Sunshot. Sunshot in uh, normal raids, I think pretty good. Certain Nightfalls, probably pretty good. I'm probably not taking it into GMs. I'm probably I'm not taking it into Master Vog for sure. A day one raid, uh, no thanks. <laughs> I don't think Sunshot's there. In terms of its slot, like Polaris, kind of similar to it in a way. Um, I think it's better than Cold Heart here. You know, I think it's you know better than DMT for sure. Um, in terms of legendaries of its uh, of its slot, not sure what it compares uh, well to. I feel like the the explosion factor, you know, of its perk beats out legendary hand cannon. So and other uh, legendaries in that slot. So, you know, just an average weapon C tier for me. Uh, next hand cannon we got last word, F tier. I don't need to even explain that. Like, you know, it, it, we all know this was designed for PVP. It was not designed for PVE. Yes, I know with the hand cannons, you can run Lucky Pants. Um, for all these hand cannons, you can run Lucky Pants. But it's just like, again, with the builds, it's like you have to be running lucky pants to make this these weapons good and if you're not running lucky pants well these all these hand cannons they'll, they suck without them and i know you can make last word do a ton of damage with lucky pants but it's just like you have to have lucky pants to make it good if you're using these hand cannons as a titan or a warlock well you don't have lucky pants so like what good it is it for you to tell uh for me to tell you that oh you know, this could be S tier if you have lucky pants. Well, if you're a warlock, well, you're out of luck because you don't have lucky pants. It's not going to be S tier for you. So for me, you know, F, F tier for uh, last word for sure. Next up, we have Thorn. Thorn. Uh, 
The interaction with Necrotic Grips does make it nice, but if you're not Warlock, then you're not really benefiting. Honestly, I think it's slightly worse than Ace. Um, it's definitely better than Last Word, and it's probably slightly and it's better than Sturm, but like, you know, it's not very good. It's more PvP-centric for sure, this weapon. I, I can't really justify using it in PvE unless you're running a certain, you know, very specific build with Thorn. Am I bringing this into raids? I've definitely run Thorn and Fell Winters through uh, Vault of Glass before. Uh, this is true. It does work. You can use Thorn and Fell Winters and Vault of Glass. It will work out for you. However, and anything other than just messing around, I don't think I'm bringing Thorn into uh, most forms of content unless I'm screwing around. Uh, next up, we have Hawkmoon, I believe. Hawkmoon, still solid exotic. I, I definitely am going to place Hawkmoon in B tier. Wouldn't say it's on par with Isanagi's. However, it is free damage you're, if you're hitting in a crits. You know, your last shot will do a ton of damage to your target. If it's a headshot or if it's a body shot, uh, definitely you're going to be wanting to hit it with those crits. But, you know, the fact that, you know, it's damage ramp up, ramps up with the Paracausal uh, stacks, like, makes Hawkmoon a pretty damn good weapon. So I, I want to say Hawkmoon is definitely in B tier just because of the ramping damage potential that you get out of Hawkmoon. Uh, am I taking this into raids? Maybe, maybe. Uh, probably some nightfalls. I don't know about GMs though. Hard mode activities probably. Uh, in its slot, definitely beating Crimson for sure and Malfeasance. Definitely beating Ace. Um, obviously not beating Izanagi's. I don't know if it's beating Aegers really. Obviously not beating Arbalest here in its slot. Um, but I think it's beating all these other weapons and certain uh, legendary weapons in its slot to make it to B tier. Next up for the hand cannons, I think that is it. Let's just double check here for the hand cannons. I think that's it with the hand cannons there. All right, moving on, we have grenade launchers. Um, I'm just gonna Pair them all together. I know this is technically a breach launcher, but I'm going to pair the breach launcher in with the grenade launchers. So first off, we have Anarchy. Anarchy kind of overshadowed with how good uh, linear fusion and fusion rifles are this season. I know it got the mag nerf, but it's still pretty decent, I'd say. Um, it still does the same damage as it's always done to champions. However, it did get that 30% um, nerf to uh, bosses so s tier is a stretch a tier i don't know if anarchy is still a tier i definitely think anarchy is b tier for sure like i'm taking i'm definitely taking anarchy over whisper just because of how easy anarchy is to use um it's still you know it's still incredibly easy to use you just put one down one of the uh, bolts down it can uh, do the aoe effect it's got a little more utility usage than uh, Whisper, in my opinion. Whisper is a little too slow, um, especially for damaging certain targets. Def Whisper is definitely beating Anarchy in the boss damage department, but I feel like Anarchy's utility usage that you can get out of it just you know, puts it a little ahead of um, Whisper and a lot of these weapons in the lower tiers. So next up for the GLs, we have Fighting Lion. Uh, even with the changes, like the, the buffs they made to Fighting Lion, I still think it's just useless. Like, it just... Um, it, if they just got rid of the reload nerfs, I think, and just returned it to its former reload um, sensation that it had, you know, uh, the fast reload speed, I think it would be fine. But then, you know, the issue is, how does that affect PvP? And like I know people want you know the different sandboxes, but I think uh, for the most part weapons should be uniform across PvP and PVE. I think that kind of messes with the identity and like you know how the weapon works. I, I don't think that's really it's it's complicated. I think that's a topic for another time. But right now, Fighting Lion is not it for PVE. Next we have. 
the GL department. It's not a lot here. We have Colony. Colony. Colony is uh, F tier. I, I think Colony is definitely still PvP designed uh, heavy. I just, the robots, you know, the Seekers, not that great. It's better when you can control where the Seekers are going. Um, if you could control, like if you could target certain enemies or bosses, but the fact that it's just like random uh, seekage, it's not it just, It's not that good. You, you're better off with any legendary um, grenade launcher over this, like a god rolled a legendary grenade launcher. The interference um, that I have probably is beating a uh, colony for sure. Next up, we have Prospector, Prospector, uh i wouldn't say it's downright useless like colony is but i wouldn't even say it's like average tier right now um i really don't like how you have to fire off all the shots with it because uh, it's full auto like i wish the full auto was gone i feel like that would make it a little better to use um because it's full auto with sticky and like one of its perks you know is like if you release the trigger like you know then you know they explode but like with full auto it encourages you to keep firing so it's just i don't know i feel like if it didn't have full auto it probably be c tier um i feel like prospector needs to be reworked but it's definitely not f tier it's definitely not on the same page as colony i still think prospector is doing way more damage than colony can ever do so prospector for me uh definitely d tier next up for the gls i believe it's salvagers uh no sorry it's not salvagers salvation's grip uh no thanks why would you ever use this aside for getting your entropic shards um this thing is just it's uh it's poo poo i don't need to go into depth if you've ever touched it you know why it's really bad it can't even kill certain ads it can't even kill red bars sometimes so pretty bad weapon and I think the last GL here is uh, Wither Horde. Wither Horde, still S tier. I know it is a... Um, I don't know how many times I might be taking it over Arbalest, but Wither Horde still does a pretty damn good job at uh, taking out uh, adds. I've definitely taken this into the dungeons, um, Prophecy, Pit. I've taken it into the new dungeon, Grasp. Uh, I've definitely taken it into raids. I've definitely taken this thing into Master Bog still. Like, Wither Horde is still such a top tier weapon uh, to use. Even if, you know, you're not in it hard with the uh, Fusion Rifle meta. You know, Wither Horde is still there for you. It's still, still a weapon you can rely on. It just excels in, in everything. I know it's not boss damage focused, but it's still, like... It's still a good weapon to have with you, um, even for boss, um, when you're in like uh, boss encounters or whatnot. You know, you can do chip damage with it and switch to like a heavy linear fusion rifle, you know, uh, it's there for you. It's your rock, you know, instant, it's an instant S tier for me, um, especially when you have the catalyst, when you get auto loading for it. Let's see. I think that does it for the GLs. Let's just double check here. All right, that's it for the GLs. Next up, we have Pulse Rifles. First up, we have Bad Juju. Bad Juju. Um, I think Bad Juju is slightly better than DMT just because you're getting, like, you know, your super. So, like, for that slot, it's doing better. I don't think it's doing better than Hawkmoon. Um, yeah, you get your super. Yeah, you get the like the rampage stacks or whatever. Um, the but like other than that, like bad juju. I don't know. It's just like a. It's a slightly better legendary pulse rifle because you can get bonus super from kills and you get the rampage stacks. But uh, and you get the full auto and yeah, you get like the infinite magazine but other than that like it's not like insane damage or like insane ad slayage or anything like that it's just like a run-of-the-mill weapon um and i think the the you know the perks that it gets kind of keeps it in the c tier 
Next up for Pulse Rifles, we have Graviton Lance. Graviton... I still think Graviton was designed for uh, PvP. Uh, even in this meta, it just doesn't have a lot going for it. Like, it just... It doesn't do the damage that it needs to do. Um, for me, Graviton F tier, I, I, haven't, I haven't brought into raids to me Nightfalls. Hard mode activities. Graviton is just not it. Next up, we have, uh, I believe, Outbreak Perfected. Outbreak, I want to say, is a little bit better than Bad Juju, just because if you have the Catalyst and you've got those Nanites going, it, and it just shoots straight, it's super easy to use. It does a lot of damage still. Uh, it's a pretty solid pick if you know you're trying to do like some boss damage you know is it in the same slot as hawk moon maybe just maybe i can't for sure put outbreak in the same slot as bad juju or in the same slot as crimson i feel like i would take this weapon over crimson and i would take this over malfeasance um it's probably sitting at the lower end of b tier so like a b minus but, you know, it definitely deserves to be in B tier for sure. It's not a C tier weapon. It, it does enough damage um, to targets. Next pulse rifle we're looking at here, I think, is Vidwing. Vidwing, PvP weapon. Not going to get into it. Read any of the uh, perks it has. It's designed for PvP. It's not designed for PvE. Yeah, maybe it's your fun factor weapon, but... This thing was designed to be used in things like trials, you know, or comp. Uh, it's not a, um, it's not a PVE weapon. I'm sorry. Let's see. Moving on with the pulse rifles, I believe it is no time to explain. No time. Yeah, maybe I have no time to explain. Why no time to explain is F tier. Um, I don't know. It's probably a slightly better uh, Vigwing, honestly, just because, you know, if you're shooting, you're hitting the crit, you're making infinite mag ammo, and then you can get the, the ghost, uh, the, I call it a ghost buddy, it's not a ghost, it's the, um, kind of like the arc buddy where it shoots, um, the shots for you, it, has like a trigger bot if anything still a very pvp centric weapon but i think you know because of how some of the perks are it benefits a little bit better than uh Vigilink does in my opinion um especially with the full auto um the full auto shoots pretty much like a laser like you don't really have to control the recoil uh you're benefiting a little bit more than you are um with uh, Vigilwing's perks. So for me, no time is probably just like D tier. Uh, if anything, it's end of D tier. So it's like D minus. In terms of pulse rifles, I think that's it. There's not a lot of pulse rifles. Get, we're getting into the home stretch here. Next up, we have Swords, Black Talon. I think just C tier still. Does good damage, but it's not really anything more or less. It's pretty good in raids still. Probably not for boss damage, but you know, for getting rid of like champs or something like that can be good. So pretty good for uh, nightfalls. Don't know about GMs, especially with how the current meta is leaning in towards uh, linear fusions. Definitely, probably some linear fusions definitely beating this out. Um, but it does, you know, significant damage. Hard mode activities. That's that's where it gets a little iffy. I think Black Talon with the hard mode activities especially how uh, linear fusions are and how uh, certain um uh legendary weapons are for the heavy slot is uh i think black talent's more d tier not downright useless and f tier because you get a ton of ammo with the um the cross counter or whatever you can do with it um you know it's like budget dawn blade so pretty okay uh but putting in C tiers, it's a little hard to justify. I don't know if it's on the same um, same page as Whisper. So Black Talon, uh, probably like a solid D tier. Next up, we have Worldwide Zero. 
sorry, F tier. It's just a relic of the past. It's just not good anymore. Like, legendary swords are better than this thing. Lament? Lament, I think, is still A tier. Just because of the healing you get off of the sword. The fact that you can do so much damage still with the sword on its own. Even with ap after all the sword nerfs. Like, Lament is still a, is a solid pick. Definitely going to take it over Anarchy, I think, in that slot. Um, probably take it over some linear fusions just because you could heal off of the uh, the chainsaw attacks. So the fact that you can heal yourself while um, hitting targets makes it a pretty damn good weapon. Uh, definitely, you can still bring it into raids. Still great for dealing with Atrax and uh, Deepstone Crypt. For Nightfall, still good for, you know, you can use it to deal with anti barrier champions. Hard mode activities, probably, I'm probably still going to bring it into hard mode activities. I wouldn't say it's S tier right now in this current meta, uh, especially with how, yeah, fusions, linear fusions are in this meta. Uh, I wouldn't say Lament's on the same page as Sleeper or as Wither Horde, uh, but I would say Lament's definitely A tier. You know, it's a solid A, a tier sword. And I believe for in terms of swords, that's it for swords. So let's move on to auto rifles. Auto rifles, first tier we have uh kerberos cerberus um I, be I believe you pronounce it kerberos um that's the the proper way of saying it but i, I hear a lot of people say cerberus uh so i'll i'll fall into peer pressure here so cerberus um it it's like a crappy shotgun that like doesn't even do a good job it's like it's like a meme exotic honestly um uh, and it's catalyst if anything just makes it worse so, so for me uh cerberus f tier um not gonna go into depth on why it just if you if you used it you you know it's it's not very good it doesn't do a lot of damage next up we have hard light hard light mentioned uh when i was talking about borealis yeah you can change modes but like the what has it got going for it really like hard light i think f tier like yeah i mean maybe d tier just because um you know you're not sacrificing your special slot for something that's completely useless like borealis um it's it's a little easier to use the borealis because it, it is primary uh instead of special so you have you know infinite void solar arc damage coming from this weapon I don't know though if it's sitting C tier. I think I would take Jotun over Hard Light. I would take Lawrence over it, Prolaris over it. Like, but it's not downright useless for like F tier. So, you know, D tier for me. Next up in the auto rifle department, we have Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo hasn't seen a lot of use um, lately. C tier. I mean, it, it can work with melee builds, but, like, other than melee builds, like, I don't know. It's not, like, it's not high damage output. Like, I feel like Bastion is a way better pick than Monte Carlo. Uh, DMT is probably a better pick than Monte Carlo. I, uh, hell, I'd take Cloud Strike over Monte Carlo. Uh, probably on the same page as No Time Explain. How I was saying, like, this is probably, like, D-. minus. This is also probably, like, a D-. minus. Just because there are, I'm not evaluating it here, but you know, getting your melee back is kind of good. So, for certain classes, so, and it's a universal thing. It's not like only hunters can use this or only warlocks can use it. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll place it at D tier. It's not downright useless like some of the weapons are in F tier. It, it, it can give you fast abilities back. So, but it's more like bottom of D tier, like D minus. I'm probably not bringing this into raids or nightfalls at all. Um, probably like low tier raids and like strikes, patrol, whatever. Um, you know, low tier content. Maybe some hard mode content, but it's, you know, it's not that great. But I wouldn't say it's downright useless. Uh, next up we have Sweet Business. I'm sorry, gamers. I know for the Sweet Business army boys out there. Sweet business is just not it. Uh, it's a fun weapon for sure, but like all it is is an auto rifle with a hundred ammo and it shoots really fast. Like 
that's all it's got going for it um which is honestly there are some auto rifles you can probably get um with overflow that pretty much you know match sweet business you, you can make a legendary rifle auto rifle better than sweet business so sweet business f tier next up we have soros soros i want to say is probably d tier it's like it's like a crappy crimson honestly because crimson heals on every kill whereas soros is like a chance to heal soros does have spinning up and spinning up does actually do a decent amount of damage um however dual receiver not that great um is it downright useless you know now that i think of it it probably is kind of downright uh, useless so like Cirrus still more of that you know pvp um pvp design to it really not a hard hitter for pve for anything honestly uh maybe if you take it into strikes you know patrol you can have fun with it but like this thing is not like a you know you any legendary weapon it was uh, any legendary auto rifle is probably better than Suros. Next up in the auto rifle department, we have Tommy's. Tommy's, I'm sorry, F tier again. Reason I say Tommy's is F tier is you gotta hurt yourself to do like to make this weapon good. And the fact that you're you know, actively working against like your health pool to make this weapon good, it's like you have to be a warlock if you want the healing rift. But it's like if you're not a warlock, well, you're out of luck. And in most, you know, forms of content where you need all your health and Tommy's is actively taking away from your health, well, it's not good if you're dead because then, you know, you're dead. You can't be doing damage. You can't, um, maybe you're, you know, you're causing your team to wipe in encounters, um, in, uh, you know, hard mode activities like Tommy's is, it's not it. Um, anything that, you know, nukes your health like that in order to make it good, um, uh, not very good unless you're playing Warlock. But even as a warlock, I don't think Tommy's, you know, can be salvaged. Next we have in the auto rifle department is nothing. I believe that's it for the auto rifles. Uh, I know I'm skipping form here, but true to the auto rifle nature, we will be going after light machine guns next, or heavy machine guns, or just machine guns, I believe they're called in this game. So first off, we have air apparent, air apparent F tier. I know some people are trying to argue with me that, you know, it's better than it looks, but like as soon as you play against any arc combatants and your arc shield gets popped, you're toast. You're toast with air apparent. And air apparent on its own, like in the damage department, like, you can get better legendary um, machine guns that do just do better than Air Apparent. Like, Air Apparent is just weak. It's very weak. Uh, it's kind of a meme gun. Probably performs well in strikes and uh, maybe in certain encounters where there isn't a boss you have to do damage to. Because, again, if you remember, light machine guns or machine guns do not... Uh, they still do decreased boss damage. They're more designed for ag clear. And even as an ag clear device, air apparent is just, it's not good enough. Um, I'd be taking Thunderlord over it any day of the week. And in true fashion, Thunderlord is next. Thunderlord is, I want to say C tier. Um, I'm probably not taking Thunderlord over Anarchy. Um, I feel like Thunderlord's mag pool and reserve pool is a little light. I think if it were increased, you know, like, by 30 or you know 30 or 40 more i think it would kind of help thunderlord out it, it feels like thunderlord runs out of ammo a lot but as an ag clear like weapon for the purpose of machine guns how bungie have designed and you know implemented with nerfs and buffs to machine guns you know it serves its purpose it's a c tier weapon it's not anything crazy like b a or s like b is pushing it i think it's probably you know, middle of the pack C tier. Um, you know, I might take it over Whisper just because of its ad clear potential. Um, definitely can still nuke uh, Lemon Bars, um, the Majors. So, you know, it's a solid C tier weapon. It, it's nothing crazy, though. It's nothing over the top. But, you know, it's a solid ad clear device. It's nothing like Witherhorde, that's for sure. Next up in the 
machine gun department, we have Xenophage. Xenophage, after the nerf it got, changing it to a 90 RPM um, instead of a 120, I think it was 120 before, really fell off a cliff, really nosedived into the ground there. I think Xenophage is, I think it's definitely better than um, Thunderlord just because you can use it for boss damage still and certain ag clear, but it's not the dominant king that it once was uh, for sure. I, I feel like putting it in B tier, like it's just, it shoots so slowly now. It's really hard to justify putting it in B tier. If anything, it's high C, so like a C plus for me for Xenophage, but I honestly, I feel like B is pushing it. Like I rarely use this weapon like in any content. And I've rarely seen people use this at all. Uh, if people use this anymore, I just think there are better weapons to be using now because of that like insane RPM nerf that it got. I think maybe they should bring it back to like a hundred RPM, kind of more in the middle between the you know 120 and 90, or like give it like a damage buff or something because it's just like it's so slow now it, it doesn't feel good even though it's full auto it, it just doesn't feel good next up in the uh machine gun department i think that's it let's double check here covered all the machine guns yes we did so next up i'm gonna save rockets for last just because of uh you know our our boy here g horn so we're gonna go with sidearms next devil's ruin Definitely, definitely a lot better now the fact that, you know, we have infinite to primary ammo. Um, you can stun the unstoppables with it. So, you know, kind of like middle of the pack. The laser does significant damage. Sidearm, still not that great for dealing with red bars. But, you know, the laser can help you with that. And the fact that it's a primary and not a special is pretty damn good. Am I taking this into raids though? Maybe. Nightfalls, maybe like low tier nightfalls. I don't know if I'm taking this into master or like GM content. Hard mode activities, maybe, maybe, but probably not. How it performs in its slot, definitely doing better than uh, any legendary uh, sidearm, that's for sure. In this C tier slot, Am I taking it over Merciless? Probably. Um, Cloud Strike, that's mixed because of how Cloud Strike is. But then again, I'm comparing, you know, special to primary here. Am I taking this over Hard Light? Yeah, probably taking this over Hard Light. Uh, am I taking this over the Monarch or Ariana's? Probably not. So for me, Devils, uh, probably like low end C. So like C minus, if anything. Next up we have Rat King. Rat King. I think unless you're using this with other people, it's just D tier. And yes, I understand if you get a kill with it and reload, it makes you invisible and it can heal you. But you know, you're probably only doing this against red bars and like in very specific situations where you need the heal that it can be useful. I just feel like you're gonna waste your exotic slot. For this weapon where you could just you know just take agers if anything and, and um the kinetic slot agers while it doesn't heal you or make you invisible you know the cc the crowd control you get out of it the freezing and the slowing you get at agers just is a little more beneficial sometimes than uh going invis and healing and going in, uh healing is nice but the invis gets a little tricky because sometimes targets uh enemy targets will just you know, kill you any uh, regardless if you're invis or not. Um, sometimes the invis is a little finicky, so I'm not really sure, um, you know, how great Rat King is. It's a lot better when you have other people using Rat King because the fire rate increases and the damage increases, so Rat King does become a lot better, especially a lot better now with the infinite ammo, so you can just keep firing away with your squad mates, but... Uh, I feel like C tier is kind of pushing it. Like, uh, I'll, I'll put it, 
you know, I'll put it in C tier. Because, you know, with Crimson in there, uh, with Crimson in there, I feel like it's slightly better than Crimson. Um, just because you also get the Invis, but then the Invis can be finicky at times. So, you know, it's probably like a solid C tier for me, Rat King. Um, I know there'll be haters out there telling me Rat King uh, deserves better, but for me personally, Rat King is C tier. In terms of sidearms, we have the three last ones here. We have Cryothesia. Cryothesia can combo pretty well with Focusing Lens, um, especially if you're running certain builds and not builds where you need to have certain mods like, you know, with a throwing knife or like um, with the Titan shoulder charge. Like Cryothesia can make help you make some insane PvE builds. Uh, however, on its own, without PvE builds, I'd say it's probably just it's probably just like middle of the pack. It's just it's okay, but it, it could be better. And it's probably lower end of the uh, middle of the pack here. It's probably like a C minus for sure. Um, am I taking this over DMT? Probably just because of the build potential. I know we're not focusing on builds here, but just because of the freeze potential for um, Stasis builds. Um, Stasis is not even a build. You just, you know, it's free. You know, Stasis uh, subclass stuff going on there. It's not like you need combat mods to create a build with that. Uh, I'm definitely not taking this over Hawkmoon. Or um, it's not on the same part of Izanagi's unless you're running certain um, exotics and whatnot. You can make it pretty good. With Focusing Lens, though, it can be pretty good. That's where I'm a little conflicted of where to put Cryothesia because of its interaction with the focusing lens. So I think with focusing lens, it's definitely like C plus, if not a, you know, B minus, but it's a little hard to justify, you know, uh, without the focusing lens. Cause you need some additional mods on top of focusing lens to make it a little bit better. Um, so for me, cryo C tier. Next up, Traveler's Chosen. Uh, yeah, full auto, osmosis, but like, I, I, it's like on the same page, just like these other sidearms. Like the fact that you can get your abilities fast um, with Traveler's Chosen after getting kills, that's pretty nice. Ability usage is pretty important in PvE, um, especially for just getting free kills, doing free damage for comboing with builds. Uh, on its own, it's pretty solid pick. You know, it's definitely not helping you deal with far away ads, but with the stuff up close, you know, Traveler's Chosen, it's pretty pretty okay. Um, however, am I taking this over DMT? I don't know. Um, it's like a better Monte Carlo, that's for sure, but it doesn't definitely doesn't have the range of Monte Carlo. If anything, this is like a D plus. Um, I know that's a little controversial putting this at D plus and this at like C. Like this is like C minus and then this is like D plus. I I'm sticking by with it putting cryo uh, in the C tier. And last up we have Forerunner, the uh, Halo Magnum, if you will. Forerunner, I don't know. Like it's just like a crappy sniper rifle that doesn't even do the same damage as a sniper rifle. Yeah, you get the uh, the frag grenade, you know, if you have the catalyst and you get enough kill, uh, get enough ammo breaks and you convert it to the rock. But like, you could, it's just, I don't know. It, it seems like it was just, they wanted it for PvP. Like, I, I don't really think it's a very good PvE weapon. I've used it in PvE and I, I just don't think it's that good. Um, it, it's just, it's like a meme gun, honestly, for PvE. I wouldn't say it's like a, you know, top tier damage weapon or anything like that. Maybe, it, you know, because it is, uh, it's a special sidearm and you do get a lot of ammo for it. It does a little more damage than some of the F tier weapons. But other than that, it's nothing crazy. It's just, you know, it's, it's a special sidearm. And in terms of the sidearm department, I believe that is it. Let's move on to SMGs. 
Risk Runner, I think Risk Runner is B tier. Um, just because of like, you know, you can shoot forever. Does does good damage. Does good ad clear. Gives you like the arc resistance. Um, pr pretty solid weapon to be using. Am I taking this? You, you know, I probably take this in the same category as Telesto as um, Le Monarch. Definitely is not getting any of those artifact mod bonuses, but. You know, I might take this over Lorentz. I'm probably going to take this over Prometheus. A little iffy taking it over Jotun, but taking it over Devils, probably taking it over Devils. I feel like it has a little more usage, especially because you can proc the arc uh, chaining on yourself by just throwing a gr grenade on top of yourself. Uh, makes Risk Runner a pretty good weapon. Am I bringing this into raids? Maybe, maybe some raids where ad clear is necessary. Uh, you can definitely combo it with a uh, heavy legendary linear fusion rifle in this season. Uh, Nightfalls, maybe some Nightfalls. Not sure if I'm bringing it into most Master or if any GM Nightfalls. Hard mode activities, probably probably some hard, hard mode activities I'm bringing this into. In terms of its slot against other legendaries, definitely exceeding other legendary SMGs and other legendaries in its slot. Um, is it better? Yeah, I've, I've said it's better than some of these weapons. However, is it better than A tier weapons? Probably not. I think Tiku's does just a better job than Risk Runner. Um, the self damage kind of kind of sucks to proc Risk Runner, but you know that's a Risk Runner issue. Next up, we have Terraba. Some people have described it as Terraba bad, but if you know what you're doing, I think Terraba is pretty solid. Um, yes, it forces you to use it the entire time. You can't switch off of it. But when you proc Ravenous Beast, Ravenous Beast is a pretty solid damage perk, uh, especially against certain uh, boss types. Not like, you know, raid encounter bosses, but like uh, against champions that can do some, you know, decent okay damage. So you got that in the that primary department. And like with the Risk Runner and, you know, other energy kinetic or kinetic slot weapons you can pair it with a good uh, uh linear fusion rifle for this season because of how um, particle destruction works um so you can make you know it's it's a pretty good weapon it's definitely better than sunshot and it's better than devils and better it's probably better than the rents in my opinion and most of these weapons here just because when you have ravenous beast up you know it it's just crazy damage it's really good next up we have huckleberry Huckleberry, I think, is still A tier. Um, a little bit better than these two SMGs. I know with Ravenous Beast proc, you know, it does the same damage, but Huckleberry has the unnerfed rampage. Auto reloads automatically, like, it shoots fast. It's just a good, like, uh, it's just a, it's a solid weapon. It's a solid ad, ad clear, you know, damage weapon. I think, if anything, it's. It belongs in B tier. I might take it over Terrible, and I I definitely would take it over Outbreak. But putting it in A tier, like I don't know if I'm gonna take Huckleberry over Agers or Huckleberry over Izanagi's. But you know, in my mind, I think Huckleberry is like A minus here for sure. Like I don't know if it's beating a lot of these weapons uh, in terms of like you know utility and like roll and um, like damage. But, you know, Huckleberry is pretty, pretty, pretty good. I think it's sometimes slept on. Um, it's still a really good and fun weapon to be using. Uh, next up in the SMG department, I believe that's it. I wish there were more SMG sidearms, uh, pulse rifles. That would be nice. Next up, we have shotguns. Shotguns, we have Acreus. Acreus, I think, has fallen off a cliff. I just don't think it's that great anymore. I do think it's still doing more damage, though, than Colony, than Salvation's Grip. It's probably doing more damage than uh, Worldline Zero and um, Air Apparent. So, you know, it's D tier, but it's just, it's slow, and it doesn't do a lot of damage, and it's just kind of outperformed by a lot of legendary, certain legendary weapons in the uh the heavy slot uh as of this season so for me 
Acrius. It's not downright useless, but it's not average tier either. So for me, Acrius is D tier. Next up, Lord of Wolves. I think Lord of Wolves is like C tier. Um, it, it's hard hitting. I think it's like C plus for sure. It's hard hitting, does a lot of damage. It's not as good as something like Terraba, just because it, you know, it runs off a special. Um, you know, if you're up close and personal with the boss, you're definitely doing a lot of damage. But other than that, um, it's ammo economy is kind of poo poo in terms of like the damage output. So my opinion, uh, Lord of Wolves C tier. Am I bringing this into raids? Maybe. Nightfalls? Probably not. Harbor activities? Probably not. Uh, you know, Master Vog? Definitely not. Uh, um, so, Lord of Wolves, just C tier. Next up, we have Shap, Chaperone. Chaperone, really designed for PvP, especially with how Roadborn uh, works. I think F tier. Yes, I know slugs are good. But like, why use this slug when you could use like a blast Rumor instead and not waste the exotic slot for PvE or just use another, uh, what's it, first and last out, like a god roll first and last out instead of using chaperone on the, on the special ammo. This is definitely, a, it's still PvP, you know, it's not designed for PvE. It definitely has its uses being a slug for PvE, but you know. There are better legendary options out there to be using. Next up, we have Fourth Horseman. Fourth Horseman, still, uh, I'd say pretty solid damage if you have the Catalyst, for sure. Um, I feel like the ammo economy is a little meh, um, and the range, you have to be up close and personal. That's where the drawbacks are seen. So it kind of suffers um, from what Lord of Wolves suffers from. But, you know... It's it's an average average uh, you know burst damage shotgun. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing like um, I, I definitely would take Telesto over it just with how Telesto's utility is and how the artifacts mar mods are this season with Telesto. It's definitely beating this. However, this is definitely beating this in terms of damage, and it's definitely beating Hard Light in terms of like usefulness uh, and all these weapons in that slot. So. Tractor Cannon. Tractor Cannon, I think, is still A tier. Just because of the debuff, um, the debuff potential you get of a yes, I know it's like it's only 15% more damage now, but 15% more damage if you're by yourself, if you're solo, that's free damage. And if you're running like one two punch shotguns, you know, pretty good. Pretty good, if anything. Um, and just as a like just as a heavy weapon, it just does good damage. Um Probably not something crazy to be using against bosses like Lament. Um, would I take it over Anarchy? Maybe? I think when I think of it like that, Tractor's probably like B tier right now. Uh, a tier, hard to justify A tier, especially when Lament's there. Am I taking it over Lament? I don't know. Uh, and I found, if I'm thinking I don't know, then I don't think that it should be in A tier. I think it should be in B tier. It's definitely not in C tier. Like I think it with Xenophage, how a Xenophage is, I feel like you can get more use out of this than Xenophage. Yes, you have to be up close because it's the shotgun. This you have the range, but like the potential um, you know, weapon combinations with this, especially with its debuff um capability, you know. That alone is a little bit better than what you're getting out of something like this or something like this. Um, just the combos, really. Uh, last shotgun here, we have Duality. Duality? Sorry, it's got that chaperone treatment. It's really a PvP uh, shotgun, not a PvE shotgun. Um, slug or pellet, you know, even with the buffs that pellets got, or are gonna get or whatever it's just like you know it this is not it for uh this uh you know for for pv it's for pvp and last but not least we have rocket launchers we have first deathbringer deathbringer with catalyst pretty solid 
However, I know a lot of people will say, oh, you know, with the catalyst, it's so good. But it's like, you know, in a second here, when we get to G Horn, G Horn is free. G Horn is just point and click. This, it's like you have to have it, you know, above the boss and it has to float down to the boss. And it's like with other rocket launchers, you just point and click and you shoot right at the boss. This, like, you know, if the if the orbs don't track pro properly, then like you're, you're doing less damage. And then it's just like, you know, it's like it's RNG based. But like if the RNG goes your way, you know, Deathbringer can do a lot of damage. So Deathbringer... It's probably B tier, you know. I, I pr might take it over Anarchy, or it might be in the same uh, in the same pool as Anarchy. I don't know if I'm gonna take this over Lament. Like, maybe, you know, maybe might take it over Lament just because it has the range and the damage potential. I don't think I'm like Sleeper. There's no way in hell I'm taking Deathbringer over Sleeper or over One K, you know. Um, but I think Deathbringer is uh, pretty, pretty good. I know a lot of people will try to argue and say it's like slept on or something. It's not slept on. You know, people know it's good. It's just the fact that it's a little like finicky to use is that's, that's why a lot of people, um, aren't using it. Uh, Warcliffe Coil. I want to say F tier. Like, it's not good. <laughs> You know, all those mini rockets just go all over the place. Like, that's not really good, in my opinion. Um, you want to have all those targeting one thing. It can be good for raids, you know, when you just want to do some burst damage or something like that. But it's not like insane DPS or something like that. Um, so I guess when I say, like, you know, it can do burst damage... It's probably like D tier, but just like the fact that the, the mini rockets are just random and don't track. And like, that's really all it's got going for it is the, um, the volley. It's like, honestly, it's just D tier. Um, and the catalyst, yeah, it makes the missiles track better, but it's like, whatever, who cares? Truth, uh, truth is like a better Warcliff coil, if anything. Um, just because you can track things, but it doesn't do a lot of damage because of how horseshoes and hand grenades works. And because of that, because of that damage fall off, not that great. Yes, you can build into it, but we're not talking about builds here. So it's hard to justify putting this into C tier. It just makes me think of Acrius when I think of truth. Um, it just, uh, like... I think Xeno is better than Truth, honestly. Like, there's, I don't think I'm taking Truth over Xeno. Uh, next up, we have Two Tailed. Two Tailed, I think if we get that Catalyst, you know, give it a third rocket, be pretty decent. I think Two Tailed's like, you know, middle of the pack uh, rocket launcher. I think the two rockets are definitely doing a lot more damage than this. Definitely doing a lot more damage than this. Um, probably on par with Xeno, maybe. I think I might take it over Xeno and Whisper. Um, so if I put it here in B tier, yeah, that makes sense. I, I probably take it over, uh, Whisper over Xeno. I just like it a little bit better. But when it comes to Whisper here, it's like it's not doing as much damage as Whisper because Whisper has, you know, that the Whisper breathing potential and like, um, the infinite ammo well not infinite ammo but like the you know more ammo potential i would say i'm gonna stick by my gut here and put uh two-tailed in b tier um if anything it's like b minus or something like that right now next we have eyes of tomorrow eyes of tomorrow is just like a better work of coil uh because you can track and you can do bonus damage i think it's good for wave clearing for sure but uh, of course, it's not as good as G Horn over here. And in terms of boss damage, I think Two Tailed is a little bit better than Eyes of Tomorrow. I feel like Eyes of Tomorrow, like it needs a it needs a damage buff. Like it's not doing enough damage. I, I just don't like it in the current state that it's um, that it's in. Uh, and of course, 
Last but not least, uh, Gallahorn, G-Horn, from the 30th anniversary. I think it's S tier, especially if you have the catalyst. It's just S tier. It's it's too good. Like I know Sleeper does a lot of damage, but G Horn's just like it's fun. It's free damage. It's way better than anything else you know here. Uh, it's easy to use. Uh, it still does insane damage even without any buffs. So you don't even need to have like those combat mods to make it good. You know, it's just good on its own. Uh, am I bringing this into raids? Yes, I am. Nightfalls, bring it into Nightfalls. Maybe GMs, not sure about that. Hard mode activities, for sure. Um, how it performs in its slot. Yeah, it's beaten all the other rocket launchers, that's for sure. It's And it's definitely beaten the um, linear fusions with the particle deconstruction, uh, it feels like. So, you know, G-Horn, a solid S tier, uh, for sure. And I believe that wraps up this tier list. So this is the final view here. I'm not going to S plus, you know, S minus any of these things. Um, it's a little more, it seems a little bit more uh, spread this time around. Of course, we got a lot here in F tier, but that's more of a relics, you know, of the past type of thing or PvP centric. Um, I think some of the D tier weapons kind of need some help in like the damage department um, or just like the per creativeness department. C tier, these are your like average weapons. Uh, B tier, you know, getting better. A S tier is the weapons you're going to want to try to focus on for the remainder of the season uh, if you can get them. How will these weapons look in next season? I don't know. I think G Horn will probably G Horn and Wither Horde and uh, Trinity and probably Arbalest uh, will probably these probably will still be S tier next season. So maybe focus on getting these weapons if you can. This is behind paid DLC, so not sure how you're gonna get that. Um, unfortunately, if you don't have the 30th anniversary. Uh, with the dungeon with the horde still very obtainable and same with trinity and i believe this is random drop still so you know these three maybe focus on these three ones here so arbalest uh trinity and with the horde other than that you know uh, pick and choose uh what you prefer to get from this tier list if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Sorry guys that this video came out so late. Uh, just been busy and kind of lazy. Uh, these videos end up being two hours, but that's just kind of my thing. I like to kind of go in depth and describe, you know, why I put each of these exotics where and uh, the purpose of that placement. So I apologize with the delay on the video and I apologize with the length, but you know, that's just how I like to do it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.